I would like to welcome the delegates to this important conference. Uh, my own association with the University of Liverpool goes back uh, some time. I'm going to have to admit it goes back to 1974 when I became the Brunner Chair of Physical Chemistry um, and subsequently I became Chancellor of the University of Liverpool. Um, as a professor of physical chemistry I led a team working on surface science and of course nanotechnology is the emerging science from the science of solid surfaces. So I'm delighted to say that the uh, Stevenson Institute for Renewable Energy is a tremendous outcome from that work in those early days. Um, the Stevenson Institute is focusing its work on what I consider to be uh, the most important single topic for research across the world at this point in time. And of course I say that because my work in the Foreign Office today, but previously as Chief Scientific Advisor, has been heavily focused around the importance uh, of climate change as a threat to future humanity. And managing that threat is a business of decarbonizing the global economy. And finding new technologies can, that can aid that decarbonizing process through directed mission-oriented research is a key way forward. Uh, and I think the team that has been assembled at Liverpool can play a very large part in that process. Energy storage activities, a key part of delivery, new means of delivering renewable energy, and of course, the overall process which needs to be integrated across all energy spheres of creating energy from primary energy sources, solar, wind, geothermal, storing energy as needed because two of those sources are intermittent, uh, and then delivering energy through smart grids and through smart energy storage techniques. All of these processes together will replace the old fossil fuel industries. I think it's very important that we recognize the magnitude, not only of the challenge, but of the opportunity that this represents. The clean energy field is going to produce a market by 2020, an annual market of three to six trillion dollars a year. And addressing that is therefore an opportunity, not only for dealing with this enormous challenge, but also for relinking science technology and wealth creation into delivering the solutions. So I think your work is not only critical, it's now become a big part of what I've been working on since I joined government in the Foreign Office nearly three years ago, <clears throat> and that is a program called Mission Innovation. So just a few words about Mission Innovation. It was launched on the first day of the COP meeting in Paris uh, in early December last year. And Mission Innovation involves 22 nations plus the European Union committed to doubling their research funding of clean energy research by 2020. And of course Britain is not only a member of that grouping but is the thought leader for the whole process. It was launched with President Obama, Prime Minister Modi of India, uh, President Hollande of France, and our own Prime Minister, uh, together supporting together those other nations. We've just had the first ministerial of Mission Innovation in San Francisco at the beginning of this month. And I'm pleased to say that the total sum committed by the member nations will be $30 billion per annum by 2020. This is an indication of how seriously the world's leaders are now taking the challenge of climate change. We need to work on this as a mission-oriented program. We need to be collaborative across laboratories, Stevenson Institute, with other countries and with other laboratories around the world to produce the solutions to this enormous challenge. I believe we can do it. I believe time is short and we need to focus our efforts. And I just want to wish you all 
a tremendous conference. This is such an important topic and what you deliver is going to be a critical part of that process. Thank you.